Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and today we've got another installment of This Week in EDM, a late installment as we are <laughs> almost into the next week of tracks, but uh, let's get into it with uh, new songs that came out this past week. Uh, ending on October 22nd. Uh, but we've got a couple new tracks, uh, starting off in the bad category, no trash this week. Uh, we've got Martin Jensen and uh, Paris Socio. Wow, I did not say that right, and I'm not going to try it again. Uh, with Hollywood. Uh, but this is a basic house track with terrible songwriting. I honestly could not stand this one. Uh, up next, we've got the Chainsmokers featuring Gracie with Think of Us. The new Summertime Friends LP is out now by the Chainsmokers. And uh, this is a stylistically just an odd track. It's just really weird. It, it's mixed in a weird way to give it this kind of like suffocating feeling. And it's really repetitive. And I did not enjoy this really at all. Then we've got Gigi Madri and Level Up with Ruin You. Um, really odd track from Gigi and Level Up here, I would say. Lots of competing sounds and movements from the heavy dubstep to the punk rock, and it just didn't really flow all that well to me personally. So, yeah, again, these are just my opinions. Up next, we've got Thirst and Chill with Drifter. Um, yeah, personally, not a fan of this. I think the song has very little substance to it. Uh, I'm also not a huge funk enjoyer, so it's not really my sound, my style. And uh, yeah, don't really love song short songs either, so all this wasn't really working for me personally. I've got Show Tech and Bass Jackers with Friends. Uh, this is kind of your basic UK big room house. Um, all of it, I think, sounds the same. So if you love it, it's a bop. And if you don't like that kind of sound, you will not care for this track. So that's that. As we move into the meh category, songs that I thought were uh, pretty meh. Honestly, there's some surprising tracks here uh, in both uh, songs that are better than I expected and songs worse than I expected. Uh, we've got Marshmallow Pink and Sting with Dreaming. Uh, very safe and cookie cutter acoustic pop here, uh, but it's it's not bad, uh, but it's definitely nothing special. Uh, they are really hoping for the star power uh, <laughs> to really pop off on the song to get all the streams um, and just the names of Marshmallow Pink and Sting. But uh, yeah, I'm not also seeing a ton of traction on this one uh, at this point in time. So we'll see if this one kind of picks up uh, later on in its release cycle. Then we've got Steve Aoki and Paris Hilton with Lighter. Uh, this is one that I was shocked was going to be in Mad, but honestly, I thought this was a bit of a bop. Uh, it's not super unique or creative, but uh, hey, it's a simple commercial deep house cut, and uh, I I honestly thought it was okay. Um, there were parts of Paris Hilton's vocals that I thought were actually pretty good uh, and sounded clean, and um, I don't know. I, I'm just, I thought it was okay. And then we got Yatep, Hong, and Liney with Losing You. Uh, fairly standard melodic dubstep track here with this one, but it does a bit of kind of, have a bit of a uniqueness with its kind of synth sound that was used. A little bit more jittery and punchy than I think other melodic dubstep tracks have been. And uh, not bad. We got Brit Laurie, All About You. Uh, kind of standard commercial slap house for the kind of modern instinct scene. And uh, I do think it shows a little bit more life than the average kind of one that has been on average monster cat instinct track as of late but uh, still nothing too uh pressing for me nothing too crazy they've got chami and mala with a prayer uh two of the foremost kind of leaders of deep house right now uh combined for a very uneventful track um not a whole ton going on and with a fairly simplistic vocal sample uh nothing to write home about with this track then we've got Alice in Wonderland and Quicks with Wake Up. A stylistically fun track, I would say, with a kind of uh, trap first drop or first half and then a minimalistic uh, psytrance second. And uh, the track definitely feels like it's the soundtrack to what you would hear if you were waking up from a dream or waking up from a nightmare. The moment you become like lucid in the dream, that's kind of what I imagine this sound to be. But um, yeah, I uh, wasn't too crazy on it. Then we've got Amnes and Only the Next with Noir, uh, an underground trap soundscape that is very raw and real in its sounding elements. Um, uh, that's definitely a deeper cut for Amnes here, and I've been really, really enjoying Amnes' stuff as of late, and an artist I have been falling in love with, but this one I thought was kind of more meh and not uh, his finest, so that's that. Then we're moving into the good category songs that I thought were good. Again, just remember these are my opinions. Uh, we've got Teddy Killers with Fight Me. Um, solid DNB from Teddy Killers here. Nothing out of the ordinary. Just a consistent and solid cut from him. We got Duskus with Moss. Uh, chill down tempo track here uh, with a kind of nature esque atmosphere. Duskus has been on this kind of chill train uh, for the last couple tracks, and I'm all here for it. Uh, right up my alley. Really enjoyed this. I've got Cage and Confession with Mirage, an underground club track with a huge kind of presence to the track. I uh, enjoyed the vocal chops um, a ton on this one too. And um, yeah, I thought it was a fairly unique Cage track. All things considered, I hadn't really heard Confession a ton uh, up to this point. So. 
Then we've got Affinity and DF Frampton with Misunderstood. Um, hey, I've harped on Melodic Dubstep for uh, a while now, but I really like this. Honestly, I thought um, the vocals were great from DF Frampton, and I thought the simplicity of the production of the track really highlighted those vocals from Dia. Um, yeah, this is my favorite Affinity track of the year, hands down, I would say. Then we've got Black Tiger Sex Machine with Kaiwachi and Wasui. I don't know how to say that at all with Skull Machine. Uh, a dubstep rap banger of a triple collab. Uh, tons of energy, some solid bars, despite the let them cook being a little bit awkward for me personally. But uh, still a solid track. Then we've got Vorso with Holonomi. Uh, the new LP of the same name. Hol Hol I think that's how you say it. Holonomi? Hol Hol Holonomi? Uh, one of those two. Um, but yeah, super long album, 20 songs, an hour and a half, 90 minutes of music, which is awesome. Uh, this track in particular, the uh, title track, is a very minimalistic drum and bass one with some spicy sound design that I thought worked really well. Kind of got this mysterious undertone uh, to it with a kind of sense of uneasiness to the whole track. And uh, I enjoyed it. I'm excited to get that whole record in my ears. And we've got Solji with Wolves. Solji is back after two-year hiatus for yet another dark and brooding track. Uh, there are certain sounds that uh, kind of remind me of classic Solji that I never really realized how much I miss them. And uh, I don't really know how to sound them out, but uh, you'll hear them when you hear it. And you're like, oh, yes, that's Solji right there. Uh, but this is a bit of a more fuller track this time around than Solji has kind of had it in the past. It reminds me a lot of old school overwork, actually, with a kind of big, ground, grand sound to it. Then we've got Starseed and Drewer, Drewy Bear and Sky Solansky, yikes, with <laughs> Echoes. Um, this is a atmosphere track with a kind of ethereal-esque vocals to it. Um, just a bright and uplifting track with simple melodies and tonal movements, and I really liked it. So uh, even though I messed up those uh, names a ton, I'm sure. And then we got Grabbits and Lucille Croft with uh, Falling Over You, a very polished, well-produced uh, killer mix of a track here. And um, nothing too new uh, for Grabbits. I'm just kind of expanding on a style that has really worked for him in the past. Uh, and this is just another cut to a solid discography. Then we've got Emanu featuring Skyam with Fingertips. The Paradise EP is out now, an eight-track EP, pretty long EP, all things considered. Uh, and this has kind of got a bit of a surprising kind of reggaeton beat to it. Uh, and when it's paired with some really soft vocals, I thought it worked quite well as a bit of a departure from Emanu's regular stuff uh, and something that I really enjoyed. This is kind of the, like the epitome of sometimes simple is best on a track, and that is that for sure. And then we got ISO XO with How to Fly, or supposed to be ISO XO, is that how you're supposed to say it? Uh, but the Kids Gone Mad LP is out now and is doing numbers right now. And uh, this is just such a unique song. This one in particular, How to Fly, a uh, unique sound and style for the modern era of EDM. It's light and airy with its vocals and melody, but kind of dark and stormy with its backing production. And I'm really excited to hear more of that album uh, in full. And our last track of the week is a standout track, and one I'm actually surprised is here. But it is Cascade and Emmett Fenn with Brighter. Um, this is a super unique track for Cascade, not your kind of basic, more commercialized house. Uh, it's kind of one long build, one long drop, and one long outro, and I think it worked really well. It's really not your typical EDM. Uh, lots of drum play and big sounds. I really loved this style. This is a certain, there's a certain genre of music like this or style that I call epics, and this would be one of them is a more a lighter of epics and uh, if you want more songs like this i have a whole playlist of that that i will hopefully remember to put in the description um that kind of goes along with this style of kind of epic sound and uh, i quite enjoyed it so yeah. uh let me know what you think of any of any uh, any and all songs uh, in the comment section below but other than that uh, i've been dakota from bowtie media and i'll see you guys in another video